A lot has been made about Ireland's lack of success in past World Cups, with a great deal of hype being built up before every World Cup, just for a disappointing exit to happen every four years. In this video, I'm going to take a look at each one of Ireland's World Cup exits to see if being labelled as chokers was warranted, or if we just weren't as good as the hype suggested. The first World Cup in 1987 was hosted by New Zealand and Australia, and with the format being four pools of four teams, Ireland finished second in their pool behind Wales to set up a quarter-final with Australia. Australia won the game 33 points to 15 in Sydney to send the Irish team packing. In 1991, the tournament was joint hosted by the Five Nations teams, and Ireland were drawn in a pool with Scotland, Japan and Zimbabwe. Ireland finished second in their pool after losing to Scotland at Murrayfield to set up another quarter-final with Australia, this time on home soil at Lansdowne Road. With some of the world-class talent Australia had on their side, they went into the game as clear favourites, but Ireland found themselves in front in the 73rd minute through a try from Gordon Hamilton, but Australia struck back and won by 19 points to 18 thanks to a try from Michael Lina. Given that Australia would go on to win the tournament with several of the team becoming World Rugby Hall of Fame inductees, Ireland's performance in the 91 World Cup couldn't exactly be seen as a letdown. In 1995, the World Cup was hosted in South Africa and Ireland had their toughest pool to date having to face Japan, Wales and New Zealand. The final game of the pool to decide the second place finisher came down to the clash between Ireland and Wales in Johannesburg where Ireland won by 24 points to 23. Ireland faced France in the quarter-finals and were easily dispatched by 36 points to 12. In 1999, the competition was expanded to 20 teams with a five-pool format and Ireland finished as runners-up in their pool yet again, this time finishing second to Australia, which meant they had to win a playoff game to reach the quarter-finals. The team they had to play against was Argentina in a game they lost 28-24, with David Humphrey scoring all of Ireland's points from kicks. The 2003 World Cup was being hosted in Australia and Ireland were drawn in the same pool as the Aussies for the second consecutive tournament. The defending champions Australia topped the pool unsurprisingly and with the tournament format being restructured into four pools of five teams, Ireland ended up in arguably the toughest pool since they also had to play Argentina. They got revenge on Argentina for the playoff defeat four years ago and this time around they won by 16 points to 15 to progress to the quarterfinals. Ireland faced off against France in the quarterfinals and France ran away with the game 43-21 despite a magic performance from O'Driscoll who was raising expectations in Ireland seeing as he was one of their rare truly world class players. Seeing as Ireland have beaten France in the Six Nations that year, while only losing to Grand Slam winners England, the World Cup hammering by the French could be seen as a disappointing end to the tournament. During the next World Cup cycle, Ireland would finish second in the Six Nations three times, losing out to winners France each time. In 2004, France won the Grand Slam and Ireland had one loss against the French, but in 2006 and 2007, Ireland and France were level on table points, but France took the trophy both times due to points difference. At the 2007 World Cup, there was a sense of expectation around this Ireland team performing and showing that they could be seen as a top four team in the world. Like 1999, Ireland were drawn in the group of death along with Argentina and the tournament host, who were France this time around. Ireland's terrible record against the French showed no signs of changing after the tournament began with underwhelming performances against Namibia and Georgia. They lost their game against France by 25 points to 3, then lost their final pool game against Argentina, who topped the pool after beating Ireland by 30 points to 15. This could be regarded as Ireland's worst ever performance at a Rugby World Cup, but considering that they were in a pool with two eventual semi-finalists, their early exit from the competition isn't that shocking in hindsight. Argentina had some of the world's best players in their side and they were deserving pool winners given that they performed well as a team while Ireland didn't. During the following World Cup cycle, Ireland secured their first 5-6 Nations trophy in 24 years by winning the Grand Slam in 2009. After years of finishing as runners-up, it seemed that they had finally made the breakthrough 
and their most talented team in decades finally had the silverware to show for their efforts. For the 2011 World Cup in New Zealand, Ireland were drawn in a pool with Australia, Italy, United States and Russia and had arguably their greatest World Cup victory to date by beating Australia 15 points to 6 to finish top of their pool for the very first time. They set up a quarter final with Wales, making it the first occasion where Ireland wouldn't face either France or Australia in the World Cup quarter final. Given the relatively even record both teams had against each other in the years leading up to the World Cup, Ireland may have fancied themselves a slight favourite coming off the back of such a massive win against Australia on their side of the globe. The spine of Ireland's team consisted largely of players involved in the Grand Slam deciding win against Wales two years ago, but Wales have brought a lot of new talent into their team in the years building up to that World Cup, which may have given them the edge as they completely outperformed Ireland on the day. Shane Williams got a try in just the third minute making it a nightmare start for Ireland but after exchanging a penalty goal each, Keita Earls finished off a try in the corner for Ireland to level up the game after O'Gara's conversion. Five minutes later Mike Phillips took advantage of the Irish defence switching off by taking the ball from the base of the rook and running straight to the try line. In the 63rd minute, Wales took advantage of some weak Irish defending by weaving his way through a gap between multiple defenders and scoring another try for Wales. This game was the first time I watched a live knockout game involving Ireland and I remember that try being the point where I knew the game was over and was hit with the disappointment of an Irish World Cup exit after having positive expectations for our chances. Ireland had a change in managers bringing in Joe Smith in 2013 which led to them winning the Six Nations back to back in 2014 and 2015. The 2015 World Cup was being hosted in England and Ireland entered the competition as the third ranked team in the world behind number one New Zealand and number two South Africa. Ireland's most difficult opponents in their pool were France who they beat by 24 points to nine to finish top of their pool which set up a quarter final meeting with Argentina who finished second in their pool behind New Zealand. Ireland didn't come out of their group unscathed however, and Johnny Sexton, who was probably their most crucial player, couldn't play against Argentina due to injury. Paul O'Connell also missed the game through injury, and Ireland got off to a nightmare start for the second consecutive quarterfinal, having conceded a try in the third minute again. Their fate would get much worse though, as they conceded their second try within 10 minutes to go down 17 points to nil before eventually getting themselves on the scoreboard with a penalty goal of their own. Luke Fitzgerald came on for Tommy Bow, who took a knock early and he scored a try to bring things back to 20 points to 10 which made it look like Ireland were back in the game with plenty of time left to play and the score remained the same until half time. Ireland scored the first try of the second half to get them back to within 3 points and it looked like the momentum had shifted in Ireland's favour, but after a couple of penalties kicked, Argentina scored a try in the 70th minute to stretch their lead to 13 points at 33-20. Just two minutes later, Argentina would score another try, leaving them with a points tally double that of Ireland's, and after another penalty goal, the game finished 43-20 to Argentina, leaving Ireland completely dejected after crashing out of the World Cup at the quarter-final stage again. During the next World Cup cycle, Ireland beat the All Blacks for the first time ever in 2016, won the Grand Slam in 2018, then beat the All Blacks for the second time to finish the 2018 season with a 100% win record. In 2019, their Six Nations campaign didn't go as planned, suffering two losses, then in the World Cup warm-up games they took a hammering from England at Twickenham and looked way off the pace which was a worrying sign that their form had taken a dip after the highs of the previous year. Many people were saying that Ireland had peaked too early and other teams had figured out how to defend against their attack so they had no surprises left up their sleeve for their opponents. Ireland's win against Wales in the warm-up games left them as number one in the world rankings for the first time ever but given the tournament draw, their prize for making it through to the quarterfinals will be playing either New Zealand or South Africa, who were ranked as number two and number four before the tournament began. With a pool consisting of Scotland, Japan, Russia and Samoa, Ireland were expected to top their pool, but a shock defeat to the host Japan left Japan as top of the pool having won all four games, 
meaning Ireland had to face the double defending champions New Zealand in the quarter final. New Zealand took a 10 0 lead within the first 14 minutes after a try from Aaron Smith, and within 20 minutes, Smith was in again for his second try to increase the gap to 17 points after some more awful Irish defending. A mistake from Ireland allowed Barrett to kick the ball ahead and score one of his signature tries, and the onslaught continued after half time, with New Zealand extending their lead to 34 points after two more tries, with Ireland yet to get on the scoreboard in the 60th minute. Henshaw eventually got Ireland on the scoreboard with a try in the 69th minute, followed by another New Zealand try, then one more consolation penalty try for Ireland, before New Zealand finished things off with their 7th try of the game. After Ireland's trashing by England at Twickenham, I had a feeling that another quarter-final exit would be on the cards, given that they'd have to play either New Zealand or South Africa, but once they lost to Japan and secured a quarter-final meeting with New Zealand, my expectations for a win dropped even lower and the game was effectively over by 20 minutes. If Ireland managed to beat Scotland in their final pool game at this year's World Cup, it's likely they'll be playing New Zealand in the quarterfinal once again. And while I don't expect such a wide gap in the scoreline again, I think it would be an extremely hard fought win if Ireland did manage to come out on top. A lot of Irish rugby supporters feel that a quarterfinal against New Zealand would be more favourable than against France. But I think the idea that New Zealand are in decline is way overstated and I still think that New Zealand can put away a game with just 20 minutes of playing their best rugby. All it takes is a loose pass and a turnover allowing them to run at an unstructured defence and suddenly they've put the game out of reach. Given how Ireland defended in their win against South Africa and the level of team morale that's been evident since Andy Farrell has been in charge, I do feel as though Ireland may finally put in a performance worthy of their world number one ranking if they make it to the quarterfinals this time around. As for the tournament exits we've suffered in the past, in hindsight I think we can see that our team wasn't as good as we thought it was in the past and we can now realise the standard that must be reached to win in knockout rugby. It may cause envy that teams we have beaten often in the Six Nations can go on regular runs to semi-finals and finals but the fact is they were better than us when it mattered most. As for the most disappointing World Cup exit that I've witnessed personally, I'd have to say it was Argentina in 2015, followed closely by Wales in 2011. If you're an Irish fan, let me know in the comments which one was worse for you, and thanks for watching.